Ezra. Start off with get Ezra chapter seven. <coughs> Chapter 7. First Kings, chapter 18. Won't do it, we'll turn there. Chapter 19, Ezra chapter 7. I'll go ahead and turn the word of prayer. <coughs> Father, thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace, God, and the fact that you love us. God, you have uh, you sent your son to die for us, Lord. You've called us to do things, God. You've given us abilities to do things, Lord. You've be gracious and merciful, your long suffering God. And Lord, you treat so good. You're so good to us. Lord, we're thankful, God, for uh, for that. We're thankful for salvation, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. We're thankful, God, for the opportunity, God, to, to live in a town, God, that's got a Bible believing church, Lord, yeah. to be able to serve yeah. uh, at the capacity, God, that we're able to serve in, Lord, to be able to give to a work, Lord, that's interested in getting the gospel to, uh, to around the world, Lord. Now, God, uh, Lord, on our part, God, is to listen and to obey. God, bring glory and honor to You and to Your Son. So God, tonight, Lord, we ask You, Father, that You help us, God. Help us to touch our hearts, Lord. Help us, God, to uh, uh, just listen to God and what You've got for us, Lord. Help us, God, to just be willing, God, to do whatever it is You, you want us to do, God. I pray, Lord God, there's people here tonight, God, that need to be comforted, God. I pray, Lord God, they get comfort tonight. God, I pray, Lord God, deny, Lord, people that need rebuke. God, I pray, Lord, that they get it. Lord, I pray, God, for reproof and for correction. God, I know, Lord, we're all flesh. And at certain times, God, we need everything. We need all of it. And God, I do believe, Lord, that you, uh, that you will talk to us, God, if we'll listen. And so tonight, God, I'm asking you, Lord, to cover me in the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, for me of any sins, Lord, that might be in my life, God, that's unconfessed, anything that's in the way, Lord. Just get it out of the way tonight, God. I pray, Lord God, be a clean vessel, God, that you can use. Lord, I pray, God, that you preach me tonight, God. Bring uh, things back to my mind, Lord. Give me utterance, God, wisdom and understanding, God. Use me tonight, God, to preach your word. Help me, God, Lord, not to say anything, God, that's just in the flesh or out of the way, Lord, or, or trying to just uh, do something on my own power, my own will, God. I pray, Lord God, tonight, Lord, that you help me, God, to preach what you've given me to preach. Lord, I know, God, you've got people up, God. You've dealt with them. And you've got them in a certain area, God, at a certain time, at a certain point where they're ready to hear something. God, don't let me mess that up tonight, Lord. I pray, God, you'd use me. We ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> right. Now, the book of Ezra. Now, what's going on here in the book of Ezra, you know it's got to do with the rebuilding of the temple, the altar there, and uh, Ezra going back and becoming... Uh, he's already scribed there and he's coming back to teach. <coughs> and it's kind of interesting how this whole thing works out here. Uh, at the start of Ezra, they, they're given this commandment to go back. And so they go back and they start building the altar. And as they go back and start rebuilding the altar there, and uh, after 70 years in battle, they, they get the commandment from Cyrus, they're headed there. He's Rubble and Joshua, they're, they're in the middle of doing all this. And then Ends up something happens there. They get a letter sent back to another king eventually, and they end up getting to, to work the seats. Well, after that happens, then you get a couple of guys come on the scene, a couple of prophets. One of them is named Haggai, and one of them is named Zechariah. Hold your place here. Turn over to the to the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai. 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 <laughs> John Haggai. <Hagee. laughs> Haggai, what we say, we're teaching all the kids in junior church the books of Bible, so they're going to say it the same way. <laughs> anyway, so we got the prophet Haggai, chapter 1. He says this, In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. So what's going on here is, <clears throat> so you start out with Cyrus, 
And there's a bunch of kings that's going through here, through this list here, and they change kings. You got Cyrus, you got Xerxes, Artaxerxes, Darius, Artaxerxes the second, Artaxerxes the third, all through these about the next hundred years here. So the names kind of go back and forth, and it's different guys. But here you got in the second year of Darius. So it's after Cyrus. The work had stopped, and Haggai shows up. And when Haggai shows up, he's got a he's got a message for him. And the message is. What y'all doing? Y'all ain't doing nothing. Right. Get busy working. Get busy doing it. That's what he's saying. You came to build the altar. You came to build the temple. You ain't doing anything. The work stopped. Get busy. And their answer is going to be, well, you know, there was a writing that came and the king said to stop. We don't know how to do it. Well, God said to do it. Amen. And so that's where they're at right here. And Haggai shows up and he says in verse 2, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, the time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. <clears throat> then came the word of the Lord. The Lord said, I beg to differ. Yeah. He says, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Oh, it's, it's okay. You don't have to have you know, a message from the king for you to live how you want to live. And what he's saying is, you're taking care of you. You're taking care of your family. You're doing the things you need to do. Uh, you don't have to have special uh, uh, proclamation from anybody to take care of yourself. What about God? That's what he's saying. What about me? What about my house? That's what he's saying. And he says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Verse 5, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You sow much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. That's not 2018, folks. This is around 520 A.D. or B.C. 520 B.C. He's sitting here. And you know what's happening? you got a bunch of people that all are worried about themselves. They're taking care of their own life. They're interested in themselves. And they're trying to make it on their own. They ain't worried about God. You know what's going on? God's saying, you ain't sick. You ain't satisfied. And you're putting your earning wages, but it's like it's in a guy bag with holes in it. He says, later on in the chapter, he says, you're doing all this work. You're trying to make it on your own. He said, no, all I have to do is go. It's gone. Yeah. You know what he's saying? He's saying your priorities are messed up. Right. And he says in verse 7, thus, can, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You say, what's he interested in? He's interested in being glorified. That's what he's interested in. We get excited about what we're doing in life. We get excited about what we got going on. There's things that distract us. There's things that's going on, and we don't even think about the Lord. Go days and not thinking about God. You know what he's saying? Think about me. Consider your ways. Look what's going on in your life. Look around. He's saying, think about me. Glorify me. That's what God's saying. He said, I want you to glorify me. Think about me some. Amen. Go back over to Ezra. So, so after that message there, they all hit the altar and they all get right and they, they get busy. And they finish the altar, they finish the house, they finish that, they started the foundation and stopped, and then they go back and finish the temple. Well, years go by, a few years longer go by, and you get to Ezra chapter 7. Now, the reason we're here in Ezra chapter 7, here's what I want you to realize God had Joshua, God had Zerubbabel that went over there to get busy. Things got shut down. You know what God did? He brought in Haggai. And he brought in Zechariah. So Haggai shows up in the sixth month. Zechariah comes in right behind him in the eighth month. And he's hammering about getting busy, doing what God wants you to do and glorifying God. You say, what is it? God's got a time schedule. God's got people that he's called to do certain things. And he's equipped them to do that. God has, has given people the, the, the gift or a blessing, the spirit, whatever it is you want to call it, the ability to do something He wants done. Amen. And so He called Joshua and He called Zerubbabel. And you know what He did? He said, that's the right person for the right job. And He's still in there. And He said, get busy. And they got busy. And then when things shut down and they got the letter from the, from the king to shut it down, you know what He did? He said, I need, I need, I need a prophet. So he gets Haggai. And you know what he did? He said, you know what? I'm going to make Haggai to where he's the right guy for the right job. And Haggai went there and did it. Right behind him, Zechariah comes in there. God said, you know what? I'm going to give him the ability to be a prophet. And he sent him in there. 
You see what he do? He equipped people with what he wanted them to do. He gave them abilities. He gave them gifts to get done what he wanted done, and he sent them in there. Amen. And so years later, here in Ezra, chapter 7, <clears throat> look at verse 1. It says, Now after these things, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, the son of Sariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Marioth, the son of Zahiah, the son of Uzzah, Uzzah, Uzzah the son of Buckeye, the son of Abashua, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron. There you go. The son of Aaron. That's easy. The chief priest. Now, so Ezra shows up in chapter 7, and it says in verse 6, This Ezra went up from Babylon. He was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given, and the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. And there went up some of the children of Israel, and of the priests, and the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nethanims, unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king, for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. So you say, what's going on? Ezra's taking a trip. Ezra was sitting back and God said, you know what you need to do? We've got an altar over there. And we've got a temple over there. You know what we need? We need somebody to go over and teach. We need somebody to go over there and get busy doing something, Ezra. And Ezra says, you know what? I'll go, Lord. And it gets to verse 10 and he says this, or verse 9, let's finish at the end of that, it says, on the, of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. You say, what is that? That is somebody that God's given a gift. And he said, I need you to do something. And he's going and he's doing it. You say, what's he doing? He's stepping up. It's time. There's a time for it. There's a time to get started. Now a lot of times what will happen to people is this. You'll grow up, you grow up in a church like this, and you'll look at people from the time you come in church or whatever, you get started here maybe, and you look at people and you automatically think those people are above you, and you can't, you know, oh man, this guy's got this, this guy's got that, and this guy's got this. You get called to do something, and you realize, you know what? I, I'm not as good as so and so, and I, I'm not as good as so and so, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. Yeah, you know what? God knows that. Right. God knows it. And you know what we'll do? We'll use that excuse as long as God will let us use that excuse to just do nothing. But you know what? There comes a time in your life where it's time to step up. It's time to get busy doing what God wants you to do, what He's equipped you to do. And He'll say, I want you to get busy. I want you to do something. I want you to get started. And I want you to get started doing something that I've equipped you to do. Now, years ago, I used to work, me and Judge used to work side by side. And when you know how it is when you work, you get all these conversations, you talk, and you have conversations a lot. And Joe would always tell me stuff, and he'd look at me and he'd say, Now, I didn't think this is true, it's just Judd here. And he'd start. And I kind of stole that. Well, I ain't kind of stole it, I stole that. <laughs> so I'll say, It's Jack there. And I'll just start, I'll say Judd there. I'll say Jack there. <laughs> Unless it's real bad, I'll say, It's Judd there. <laughs> I'll say, It's Jack there. And I've got some theories, I've got some ideas, I've got some thoughts just from reading through the Bible and, and stuff will go through your head. And I'm not saying I can prove it from the Bible, but here's what I've noticed from experience, like Jacob learned from experience, or Laban learned from experience, he said you can do this. You know what you find out? You find out this. <coughs> Going through here and watching, I've seen people go to the mission field and not make it in the mission field. And it's not because they're not a good person. It's not because God ain't equipped them to do things. It's not because they don't have any gifts. It's because God don't want them to be a missionary. And I have seen people leave the field, and I've seen them with their head down and thinking they messed up, and the only reason they went is because they got a burden, they, got, they felt like it was the right thing to do, they just thought it was was, they got mixed up, there was a lot of pressure on them, they decided to go to the mission field, and I can remember thinking, man, I still think I was going to do it. He's a great guy. That guy right there makes somebody a great assistant pastor. And that pressure gets put on them and they think they got to go to the mission field. And they go to the mission field. And they mess up. And they're out. You see, here's what Jack theory is. 
I think God equips you to do something, and I think you need to get in the role that God's called you to do. And I think He gives you a new... Have you ever just seen somebody in the role that you know, man, is made for them? I mean, they're just they're just in that role, and you're like, man, that is... They are right there. I remember we started junior church, and God started, it was... It was me and Beth, and we started, I think, down here in this, before the building was ever even started. I was talking about the other day. I said, I think maybe Jake Sexton was in junior church at one point. That's how long it's been. So 13 years, I'm like, man. So you're sitting here, and you get this junior church started with a little girl named Ashley Miles that used to go here with Steve Meyer. And she was there, and she was uh, doing Sunshine Church for me. Well, she decided she got called to go to PBI. She was leaving. Man. Who am I going to get that? And I would love to say that I sat here and sweat great drops of blood and asked God for the right person. But I didn't. I looked for somebody I thought was willing, that I thought was good with kids. So I asked Miss Nancy, I said, hey, would you do something for the church? Man, was that a home run? You talk about somebody that's in the right spot doing what she's been called to do and just excelling at it. Right. You get the right person with the right gift in the right spot and you will see just stuff just go. I mean, you watch a... You take Brother Schlechty. He loves what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. He loves it. You hear him talk about it. I mean, he'll get up here and start talking about it, man. He'll, he'll get up on his tiptoes and start talking. Man, oh, look, Jack, I was down there. He'll start bouncing. He gets excited. He loves the Word of God to go out. He likes a new sign to go out. Like, Look at this new material on my brother Jack. I try to be excited. <laughs> Start before he does. You say, well, man, he's in the right role, man. He's in the role. He's in the right role and he's doing what God's called him to do. Not just what God's called him to do, what God's equipped him to do. The point I'm making here with Ezra is this. You know what Ezra did? He showed up. He was a ready scribe. He was ready to write. He was ready to read. He was ready to do what God called him to do. He was ready to teach. And when it was time to step up and God needed somebody, you know what he did? He said, I'm, there. I'm here. I'm going. I'm going to step up. I'm going to get busy. Amen. I'll go. I'll go, Lord. I'll go. I'll go do what you want me to do. And he took off. Everybody ain't called to be a missionary. Right. Just like I believe some people go that ain't called and mess up. I believe there's people called that God has equipped and God said, I want you to be a missionary and they don't want to go. Yeah. And so they don't. And it messes up a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> and they get going. Look over at the book of Elisha. Uh, book of Elisha. <laughs> book of 1 Kings. Little Brown was praying walk home. <laughs> what if he mentions Elisha? <laughs> Oh yeah, Brother Dad's going to be preaching tonight. I said, on <laughs> I was in junior church this morning, so I don't know what went on. <laughs> Hopefully we'll agree. If not, yeah. go by him. <laughs> First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. So, here's the point I'm trying to get to. You take somebody that's just made for a role and they get in and you see it. I mean, it is... It is exceptional. I can remember growing up, and good, Todd's not here. I'm gonna tell a story on him. All right, so, so I'm in I'm in high school, and me and Todd's like brothers growing up, and he was like my big brother. I just thought he was I thought he was all that. I thought he was great, and I, I thought there wasn't nobody to whip him. I thought there wasn't nobody to do it. I just, I thought he was great. I thought he was a great worker. We'd go work together. Whatever he said, I did. I just did what he said. I, just, I, thought, he, I thought he was everything. And I can remember one year in spring football practice, he had decided he wasn't going to get tackled during spring practice. Back then it was only 15 days. <laughs> what month? So it's only 15 days of practice. And so he decided, I'm, not going to, I'm just not going to get tackled. And I remember thinking, what do you mean? I'm not going to get tackled. I'm going to make him bowl whistle every time I run the ball. And I thought, Okay, he'll do it because because it's taught. He'll just do it. He was a fullback. And if there was ever anybody that was meant to be a fullback, Todd West might be a fullback. He just looked the part. I mean, he just had. He was muscular. He 
it was low to the ground. I mean, he can't even hardly turn around now because he played fullback. He's like this. Because of his neck. But man, it was always up. It's all about it. He goes to the hole, son, it was bam, bam, bam. And he had the ball. He's, I mean, I, I went back one year and looked. He'd average eight or nine yards of carry out of the fullback. He just a, he was just a fullback. So I remember one year of spring practice. So he, he kind of gets going with this. And first couple of days, he ain't been tackled. Literally. He had, and they blow the whistle every time. So you had one guy on our team that I thought was, actually I thought he was meaner than Todd, bigger than Todd, he was strong, he looked like a man, looked like an NFL football player to me. <laughs> looked like he could just take Scott high and flip it over. Yeah. And so they hit each other. And there's a big, it's just, it's just on. And he's trying to just pick him, he's trying to pick Todd up and throw him down. Because he kind of got out, he wasn't going to get tackled. He kind of get this, you know how it goes. Well, they get going. Well, everybody's jumping in, and it's going, and all of a sudden, they're blowing the whistle, they're blowing the whistle, and they ain't quitting because this guy's decided he's taking you down, and this guy ain't going down. Yeah. And it's just on. And finally, they finally pull him apart. And I remember Todd just goes back like this right here and looks at him and goes, he takes that football and hits it right in the face mask with that football. Just, and then it's on again. You say, what? Well, he just was that role. He was just that. Yeah. Now, and they don't give it a big hand because you all think about him. You're thinking, Todd? <laughs> Todd West? <laughs> yes, it was. It was like that. You say, well, what's the point? The point I'm trying to get at, you get one person with the right attitude in the right role with the gift that they've been given. And man, it's on. Yeah. And Ezra did that. And I'll tell you somebody else. It was Elisha. Yeah. Yeah. And so the story here in 1 Kings chapter 19, here's what you got. 1 Kings chapter 19, look at the, you know the story here God tells Elijah, he says Elisha is going to be the next prophet in your room. You go anoint him to be prophet to take your spot. So Elijah, so Elijah says, alright, so Elijah takes off, he takes his mantle, he shows up and Elisha is sitting there working like a dog. There's 12 yoke of oxen out there and he's on the 12th and they're out there and they're working this field and I mean it's on. You can tell he must have a lot of money. Got 12 yoke of oxen. Must be a big place. Got a lot of work going on. A lot of stuff happening in Elisha's life. Right. And so it's obvious he's got something going on. Got something going for him. And so Elijah shows up and he just drops the mantle on Elisha. Now, I don't say what happened. It don't say what went on. But what it did say is that Elisha says this. He says, I'll follow you. So let's, let's pick it up here in uh, uh, verse 19. 1 Kings 19, verse 19 says, So he departed this and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing on twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother. And then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave them to the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Alright, look at 2 Kings chapter, go to 2 Kings chapter 1. So, so what's going on right here is Elisha gets his mantle dropped on him. I don't know how it happened, but I do know this. He knows what's going on. So Elijah walks by and he drops this mail, and Elisha's reaction is, I'll follow you. So now Elijah was Elijah was told, here's what Elijah was told. Go and on Elisha to be the prophet, the next prophet. Now I don't know how he knew, I don't know what he knew, but when he dropped that mail on him, that mail meant something. And Elisha just automatically said, I don't know if he'd already been praying. He already knew what God was dealing with him about. I don't know how all that was going to don't say. But I know this, Elisha was ready to follow God. Amen. And he was ready to do what God wanted him to do. And he said this, I'm going I'm, I'm to put you down there and I want you to be the next prophet. And Elijah goes by and he drops that man on Elisha. And Elisha looks and says, I'm on. Let's do it. And so he goes. Now what ends up happening is about 10 years goes by. And the Bible says that Elisha ministered unto Elijah. You know what he did? He sat there and he went through this thing and he followed Elijah and he learned how this thing works. You know what happens a lot of times? A lot of times, people get ahead of themselves. People get ahead of things. They don't want to sit. They don't want to learn. They don't want to listen. They don't want to get experience with other people. So, so the first thing that happens is Elisha, you know what he did? 
He accepted the gift. He, you know what he did? He just said, you know what? I'm just going to accept the fact that God's given me the ability to be a prophet. Now that's not just saying, oh, look, I think I can be the prophet. I, that's not, he's not bragging on himself. Here's what you've got to realize. God's given you a gift and it's not bragging or being braggadocious for you to sit here and say, you know what I think God's done for me? I think God can let me do this right here. I, I'm pretty good at this. You know what some people are good at? Some people are good at mathematics. Some people ain't. Some people are good at English. Some people ain't. Some people's got a good memory. Some people don't. You say, well, the point that I'm getting to is this. God didn't make everybody exactly the same. He's given everybody a gift, everybody an opportunity to go do something. He's given you an ability. And He gave Elisha an ability. And that ability was, He was going to be a prophet. He was going to be the prophet behind Elijah. And you know how great Elijah was. Amen. I mean, it's not humility to not do what God's called you to do. Amen. We don't need to get out and brag and all that stuff and talk about how great you are and all that stuff. But at the same time, you can't pretend like you don't have a gift. Amen. God gave you a gift and He gave it to you for a reason. Remember what Haggai said? What are you all doing? I told you to go build my house and you didn't. I want to be glorified. Amen. That's what He said. Amen. He said, you got a gift. Get busy doing it so I can be glorified. Amen. So Elisha's sitting here and while Elisha's doing, he's got that mantle dropped on him and he's not saying, oh, shucks, I just can't do that. But I tell you, I just, that's above me. I just, Lord help us. I, could, I just couldn't do it. That ain't what he's saying. I mean, people say that stuff, and you know what? They're saying, God, you give me a gift, I'm not going to use it. That ain't what Elisha said. So Elisha gets in the middle of this thing, you know what he did? He accepted his gift. That's the first thing he did. I am good at being a prophet, God. You gave me this gift. You told me I can do it. I'm going to accept that gift. <coughs> what was the second thing he did? The second thing he did is he stuck with Elijah. For ten years, he ministered. The Bible says he poured, they, they talk about pouring, hands on the, uh, uh, pouring water on the hands of Elijah. You say, what did he do? First he accepted his gift, and then he developed his gift. Some of you got, a, got gifts, but it's raw. Yeah. It's raw. You can't use it. You don't know how to use it. You don't know what to do with it. There's things that's going on. I mean, you got kids at second, third, and fourth grade. They've got a mind like, I mean, it's crazy how smart they are. But, man, it's raw. You don't know. What, if somebody don't get a hold of that and begin to develop it and put it the right way and put it in the right use, you know what happens? Yeah, it goes the wrong way. You've right. got to be developed. Elisha, Elisha, God said, I'll give you a gift. He accepted the gift. He said, I'll do it. I'll be the next prophet. And then he didn't start trying to tell Elisha what to do. He says he ministered unto him. He poured water on the hands of Elijah. He said, what did he do? He took his horse and he put his horse up for him. And he went out and did. He said, Elisha, I'm going to go do this. You go do this for me. And it wasn't something great to do. And Elisha said, all right. Whatever it is, I'll do, Elijah. I'm not going anywhere. You ain't getting rid of me. I'm staying with you until it's over. He did. He stuck with it. Hey, right. He developed his gift. What gift you got? What kind of gift do you have? I, I think about things like a, like my wife's got a, a gift to sing. She does. She's got a gift to sing. And that's no secret. She can sing good. She sing. Ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> She's a singer way before she ever met me. <laughs> but the point is, how can you use it for God? How can you use this singing ability for God? You know what's going to happen Wednesday night? You're going to have youth night. You know what she's going to do? She's going to get up here and she's going to lead some kids and sing. You know what she's been doing? She's been teaching them. She taught them some more this morning down at junior church. Just standing there, just trying to get them excited about singing. Trying to get them to be loud. Trying to get them to listen. Trying to get them to say, listen. You know, you're going to be on TV. Don't stand up with your mouth closed. <laughs> she's trying to get them excited. He said, she just wants to bring glory to God. Amen. Take that gift you got and say, I'm going to bring some glory to God. How are you using your gift? Amen. Some of you in here, you've got the gift of good looks. Some of us. You <laughs> we were at the end of the line. <laughs> we're at the first of the line holding the door for everybody else. <laughs> However the jokes go. How are you using it? How can you use good looks for God? <coughs> You'd be amazed at the people that will take a track from somebody that's pretty and won't from somebody that's not. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I've watched it happen. I bet you there are, somebody's done a study on it. I bet the government's gave money to do studies on it. <laughs> they have done studies about this in interviews when people are hiring people. And if it comes down to it, I mean, there's one and there's another one. I ain't talking about just girls. If a guy walks in and he's handsome, good looking guy, they'll choose that guy over there. You say, why? It's just human nature. God's give you a gift to be free. You can bring Him glory with it. Esther did. Esther did. And we say every week laugh. What are you using your looks for? To tell everybody else how pretty you are? To sit in the mirror and yep. look how great pretty you are? And he didn't give it to, the, to you for that. Amen. You know what Elisha said? He said, I've got a gift. Lord, you gave it to me. How can I use it for your glory and your honor? And Elisha decides he's going to do it. <laughs> He got that mantle dropped on him and he was ready to do it. You got a, you got a gift. You got a good job? How are you using it for God? You got a good memory? How are you using it for God? You memorizing scripture? You helping people? Amen. You know the point I'm trying to get to is this. You're supposed to bring glory to God. He's given you a gift to do it. And we're using it for ourselves. To glorify ourselves. To bring pleasure to ourselves, for our flesh. To be able to take care and pay for ourselves. To brag on what we did, how good we did it. What are you doing for God with it? I'm not saying go be a missionary. What I'm saying is, what do you have that God gave you? He says in the New Testament, don't brag about it. You didn't do nothing to get it. He just gave it to you. Amen. That's what he says. And the point is, what are you doing with it today? Elisha shows up. Elijah shows up and Elijah's sitting there and he's plowing. Obviously, he's been in some prayer meetings. So the first thing you need to do is you need to be praying. God, what do I have that you gave me? When you get it, you know, you don't, don't put it in the newspaper. <laughs> no, that is bragging. Just accept the fact that God's given you some gifts. I was looking at a picture a while ago. You, you'd be surprised about what you can do. I was looking at a picture a while ago that Beth, uh, right before we came to church, look at this picture. I said, oh, man. Joshua was about this tall. And he's sitting there at church camp. You know who's in the picture with him? Sister Allison. Making a difference for my boy. Yeah. At church camp. You say, what was she doing? Probably hoping he didn't kill himself. <laughs> she's in a picture with him. She's spending some time with him. She's, he's grinning ear to ear. You say, what? Well, just being kind to somebody. Amen. Some of you got the ability and the courtesy to be able to be kind, to smile to people, be able to just go up and talk to them. And you know what? You should be using that for God's glory. Amen. You go in, you talk to somebody, you, you're nice to them. And, then the next thing you say, yeah, invite them to church. You ask them if they've ever been saved. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, you know, go in there and beat them to death with it. Some of you got a gift to be able to get close to somebody. Amen. Some of you got a gift like that, you don't use it. You don't want nobody to talk to you. You just, ah, oh, shit. Huh. Talk to somebody. <laughs> and you sit there, you know, I, I get like that sometimes. Oh, there's people at work. I'll walk a different route. <laughs> I walk a different, walk a different route because I don't. I know I'm stuck. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that gift. I've got these two little wrinkles right here, Brother Terry. For some reason it makes people not want to talk to me. I'm not very inviting. My wife can in. She'll walk in a store and people start talking to her. She don't even know. Come out, she knows the whole story. Boy, have mercy on you. You stay gift. What gift have you got? You ever think about it? I get intrigued reading through the Bible. You ever just read through the Bible and something always stands out to you? The Bible just talks about God gave them the spirit of wisdom to be able to work with this right here. God gave them the spirit of wisdom to sing. God gave them the spirit of wisdom to do this. And I, every time it just jumps out at me. Yes. God's gave me something. God's gave me something. You ever just sit down and think, man, God gave me something to do. Gave me something to use. He gave me something and I can use it and I can bring glory to God. I can do something with it. What's your gift? Look down in uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. It says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tell me here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And you know the story? They sit there and everybody's saying, you know, he's getting ready to leave today. Elisha says, I know. And you know what Elisha's saying? By saying that, 
Elisha's saying this. God called me to be a prophet. And, and Elijah's leaving today. I'm fixing to be the next prophet of Israel. It's getting ready to happen. I've been waiting for this thing for 10 years. He's got this gift. He's accepted it. He's been developing it. You know he's ready to do? Ready to step up. All right. What's God called you to do? Are you stepping up? Or are you stepping back? You know what the Bible says over in Hebrews chapter 5? It says, For the time when you ought to be teachers, you have somebody else that needs to teach you because you don't forgot the first principles of the oracles of God. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 5 12. And what's happened is there's a time, God says, a time you've got to be a teacher. And Elisha, you know what? God don't want to hear us. Well, so and so is better than me. Well, so I just don't know if I can do it or not. I just get nervous. Well, I just I don't know what I would do. They said no. God don't hear those excuses. Amen. You're here to glorify Him. Amen. There's a time to step up and exercise the gift. And Elisha is sitting here and he's ready. He's willing. He's been developing this gift. He's waiting on the opportunity. He's listened well. He's just done what he's done. All these other people are saying, yeah, you know he's going to be gone today. I know. Shut up. I got it. I'm going. Hi, go to another town. You know he's going to be gone. I know. I heard it. I heard it from the last message. I heard it on Facebook. Yeah, he's leaving. I got it. Amen. And Elijah's like, you stay here. No, I ain't staying here, Elijah. I'll do anything you tell me to do, but leaving you ain't one of them. And he gets there, and it's out there, and he gets beside the Jordan River, and it says all these prophets here are watching. And Elijah's standing there, he's with Elijah, and Elijah takes that mantle that he got called with, that Elijah got called with. Don't you know that that mantle meant something to Elijah? Sure. I mean, it's sitting there and he sees him grab that mail. How many times do you think he grabbed that mail? He looked at that mail and he thought about that day where God called him to be a next prophet. And he looked at that mail and he smites that river Jordan and it splits and they walk on dry ground and they walk across. And you got all those sons of the prophets over there, they're all watching this thing happen. And he takes off and goes across the river Jordan. And there they are. And Elijah looks at him and he says, What do you want, Elisha? One double portion of your spirit. <laughs> oh, I just ain't as good as somebody. Well, ask God for a double portion of their spirit. Ask God to bless you better than you than they got blessed. Not for your glory, for their glory. Amen. And God said, Elijah looked at Elijah and he says, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, Wow, that's a hard Amen. thing to do. Yeah. That's, that's a big deal. He said, But if you're watching, Till I'm done, till I'm gone. You can get it. Amen. And it says they're walking out through there, man, they hear something come. <laughs> and all of a sudden, those chariots and the horses and all that stuff, man, it's happening up there in the sky. I don't know if the sons of the prophets, I don't know else who can see it. But man, it's a gets on. Yeah. And Elijah's looking up, and Elijah's looking up, man, and it's it's going up through there, and it comes down there and it splits from there, and he's watching Elijah go. And he's watching him all the way out of sight because he's wanting a portion, he's wanting a double portion of the spirit. And all of a sudden, what happens? <laughs> he starts seeing something. <laughs> Falling down. It's that man. That man will just <laughs> boom. You know what he's you know what he's got right there? He's got a decision to make. Is he gonna step up? This is it, it's what he's been waiting for. He walks over there. He looks at that mantle. He reaches down and grabs that mantle. He walks back and he's looking at that river. He's got to get back across. It's the moment of truth. He pulls that thing. He wads that thing up. I don't know how to wad that for a They wad that up. <laughs> he strikes that river and he says, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The sun in that river parts. And he goes across on dry ground. He said, what's he doing? He's taking the gift that God gave him. He accepted it. He developed it. And now he's exercised it. And a lot of us, we get that gift. And we start trying to develop it. We don't think about it. I don't know. Nothing. And we don't ever exercise it. We just use it for our own glory and our own honor. Use it to get a good job. Or use it to be funny. People think we're funny. I don't know what you you can use it for something. God's given you an ability that other people don't have. So you can glorify Him. Amen. I'll tell you a story. 
of God. He died a couple years ago. He was born back in the 30s, I think, somewhere back around there. And uh, got married around 1948, I think. Had a daughter in 1952. His wife got sick. <coughs> So his wife got sick. He was in Southern California there. and Doctors didn't really know what was going on, so he started sending her across the border to a, down to uh, Mexico. And there was a doctor down there that began to give her some stuff and kind of helped her. Well, eventually that guy passed on. His son took over the ministry. Well, he got to where he would take her down there and leave her for a couple of days. He got to where he's trusting her real good. They decided to do some kind of a test on her. She didn't know about it. Come back about killing her. Got her back, she just, she was a mess. She was a mess from then on. They had a daughter. They had a little girl that grew up and she decided that she wanted to get with the wrong crowd, the wrong guy, so she ended up getting with this guy and she ended up running off and didn't know where she's at, couldn't find her, didn't know what's going on, gone for days. Finally found her. She was inside of a house with this guy and she had been, they'd been doping her up and taking money from her. She didn't know whether she's coming or going. Didn't know what was going on. Getting ready to die. He found her. He couldn't press charges because this guy was an FBI informant. He, you know, been telling on people. So he didn't get, didn't do nothing. Got her back. She's almost like an invalid. Didn't, couldn't even talk hardly. Couldn't even do nothing. Beautiful girl. Seen pictures going through his books. Seen pictures of what she just, she just, just a mess. Just done. You say, man, that's that's just tough stuff. <coughs> Got her back, had to keep her herself the whole time. Found out that she had gotten pregnant at one point, had an abortion. The only opportunity he had a grand to have a grandkid had been aborted. All that stuff going on. He got he went to work for a cartoonist company and come up with this idea about some type of stone age <coughs> characters that might could have a cartoon with it. Ended up in an argument with another guy that worked there and ended up leaving. They took that later on and started a cartoon show called Flatstones with him. He didn't get any credit for it. He went to Coke, Coca-Cola. Came in and told him, he said, I got a slogan for you. Talking about getting Coca-Cola to the whole world. You need to go global with it. And they were like, you're just you're about 10 years too soon. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't go with it. They said, now nah, we ain't going to do this. About 10 years later, they started coming out. Coke come out with that slogan about what the world needs is a Coke and all the songs and Hear all the songs back in the 70s and 80s that came out. So this guy right here, you say, what's the point of the story? The point of the story is, this guy was a cartoonist. And he had all these opportunities. All these things went bad. But the one thing that he did do is he used his gift for God. It's been said that he's probably the most widely read author that's ever lived in our lifetime. You know what his name was? Jack Chick. Jack Chick. Say what he do? Had a gift. Had a gift. Took a draw. Write stories. Hey. What he did? He did for 55 years. Writing chick tracks. He just passed away in 2016. 93 years old. All that stuff went on in his life. You know what he did? Brought glory to God. Amen. He didn't go to the mission field. But his tracks did. He didn't learn Chinese. But his tracks did. Yeah. He didn't learn whatever they speak in Papua New Guinea. But his tracks did. Somebody else translated them for him. He said, What did he do? He said, God, you gave me a gift. I want to bring the glory and honor to you. Amen. What are you doing? Yeah. Amen. Consider your ways. Soft stand. You want to put the offer? You put the offer. You know what I mean? Miss Robin's coming up. She's going to start. What? <coughs> Time to step up. It's time to step up. You gonna step up? You gonna hold back?
God's called you to do something. He's given you a gift to use. What are you going to do? 55 years dropping chick tracks. 